Hey, what's going on guys? Today we're checking out a new Hot and Fresh Build Divers Re-Rise kit. This is the Gundam Aegis Knight. It looks pretty cool, very unique design definitely and fingers crossed later on we'll be getting a full-on HGCE Aegis kit, like a new version of the HG Aegis. Uh, you know, I'm sure it'll be coming eventually, but in the meantime we can take a look at this Build Divers Re-Rise variant. And I believe it was the Justice Knight was the previous version that came out before this. I didn't really like that design, so I skipped that kit, but this one I like a lot more. It's a pretty cool design, but I'm looking forward to getting it built up and then seeing exactly just how much I end up liking and what I end up liking and not liking really about the design. I'm a little bit nervous about the shoulder design. Not sure if I'm going to necessarily be into that, but it looks like it's got some pretty cool gimmicks. And then, of course, it can be all combined to make that big, massive kit, which we're not going to be making in this video. Just want to mention that. But let's just go ahead and get right into it. Take a look at the box here. So we got some pretty cool box art here on the front. It's pretty standard though, HD Build Divers box art. There you can see the transformed mode there in the background, which I'm gonna guess not gonna be very cool looking, but uh, we'll see in the review portion once we get to that. Over here on the side, you can see this number 33 in the line. Over here on the bottom of the box, you can see we got the Raite Shot Lancer and then the shield. And you can get that set as like a custom set just on its own, can't you? I believe that's right. And then the Levitane Beam Rapier as well. So you got a bunch of different kind of weapons here. You also got the Kiranos Hyper Beam Sword that you can make too. So pretty crazy stuff going on here. You can also transform it into Assault Combat Mode and then the Core Fighter version of that too. So that's the transformation that it's got. So it's got all kinds of gimmicks built into this. And of course you can make uh, the Re-Rising Gundam by combining this with uh, some other different kits from the line. So there's that. On the top of the box, there is the front and back, what the kit is going to look like when it's all painted up. It looks very cool, very colorful, and then some information about that in Japanese and in English about the Knight Gundam, and then the introduction just to the story. So inside here we've got six bags of runners and our instruction manual, or what's this thing? Ah, you get a separate instruction manual here showing how to make the Re-Rise Gundam, so that's kind of interesting. So you, uh, if you guys don't know, you'll definitely need this kit in order to make this. Of course you need this for like the main center part, but the parts, the joint parts needed to make, to put some of these sections together are included with this kit. So if you all do want to make the Re-Rise Gundam, you'll definitely need this. And this also contains the instructions. Well, we don't need that, so let's go ahead and take a look at the regular instruction manual here. Once again, we got the box right there on the front on the top down here an illustration of the Gundam and the pilot Kazami down there some information about both of them there in Japanese and in English and also a little bit about childhood memories anyway back to the back side of the manual you got mobile armor mode some more information about the assault combat mode the right eye shot lancer the Aegis shield and all the weapons and everything on there and then at the bottom we have our color guide there in Japanese and in English as well let's crack this open to our parts list page and the question of whether this is going to get a regular Aegis kit later on is probably going to be solved when we take a look at the runners, but for the meantime we can see that here on the parts list there's going to be some leftover parts from the B runner, which looks like probably going to be joint parts later used for the Aegis Gundam. And then you've got a few leftover parts from some of the other runners as well, so that should be interesting to see what we have left over. I'll go over that uh, once we get to the review portion of the video, but the instructions here are pretty standard, so nothing really too much to see there on the back side on our color pages. It just shows you how to utilize the weapons, how to you know put some of the effect parts into the weapons, things like that, how you can pose that. And it's got the high speed cruising mode transformation there, the assault combat mode transformation over here, and then just how to make the core fighter version of this as well. So lots to do with this kit, Well, let's just go ahead and run through the runners first. So this kit has no polycaps, but it does have a little sticker sheet here with just a few foil stickers for a couple of cameras, the eyes, and then a couple little black bits, so very minimal for the sticker sheet here. And then you do have an included base, just a simple one. This is the BA0 base that you just cut apart and make for just a very simple but effective base. Runner A, obviously a runner very specific to this version of the kit, is in four colors there. We've got some red over on the side, one clear blue part down at the bottom for the chest, which looks very nice. Um, bright fluorescent metallic -y green up there at the top and then some molded gold there for the rest of the runner and then we're going to be here as expected is marked for infinite justice gundam there it says on it hg 144 scale so this is obviously our joint parts and stuff and then we've also got b2 for a copy of this section of the runner here and then we're going to see one here in this uh, dull bluish gray kind of color is actually from the injustice knight and then we've also got runner c2 which is a copy of this section of that runner here Runner D2 in white here is going back to Infinite Justice for its markings. And then once again, bouncing back to Injustice Knight here, Runner E1 is back in white. And then Runner E2, a copy of this section of the runner here. And then Runner F1 back to that brownish, metallic-y kind of gunmetal kind of color here is once again from the Injustice Knight. 
And we've also got runner F2, which is a copy of this half of the runner. And then runner G1 is in a much more silvery, metallic y kind of gray color here, but it's still pretty dark. This is actually G1 and G2, the runners are stuck together here, but these are marked for the Gundam Justice Knight. And then for our effect parts here in clear yellow, we've got runners J2 and J3 combined together. These are actually from the Ninpulse Beams, it says on here, so they'd be from that uh, custom set, so kind of interesting. So there you can see you've got quite a lot of stuff in there. We will have a fair amount of leftover parts and in the review, like I said, we'll go over those and see what all would really be very useful or not. But for the meantime, I think it's going to look pretty cool. It's going to be a fun build. So I'm going to get this all built up. We'll see how it looks. And all right, guys, so here it is. And I got to tell you, after going through the process of building this kit up, I'm not sure I'm really liking it as much as I was expecting to. First of all, the color scheme. I mean, I kind of get that it's a pretty wild design, so it's got a wild color scheme. There's just a one too many colors going on there. So definitely not really too keen on this color scheme. I think it's the reds. The reds just like are really kind of really out of nowhere there. There's huge chunks of red there on the side. So I don't know. I would definitely change the color scheme if it was me, but the kit itself, I mean, is pretty solid. And as we'll see in here as we go through the articulation and everything, uh, it's like a pretty good kit, like overall, objectively, but I think it's just subjectively, it's a strange design and there's some weird parts going on in there that I'm not really too keen on, but I'll let you guys make up your own mind. I'll just show you the kit and you can see for yourself, you know, whether it's something that you're going to want to pick up for yourself or not. But alright, so as you guys saw a moment ago, the stickers at least are very minimal. So you just got the head camera there on the front and then one on the back there also. You got the eyes stickers and you have these black stickers that go here in the center of the chest and then those small little sections on the side of the front of the chest. So that's all there is for stickers, which is great. Uh, but as far as like movement and articulation, let's first just talk about these shoulders. They don't want to stay on there very well at all because they're just plugged onto this ball joint and you can see just in that kind of like oval shaped section there. It doesn't really hold on there very tightly because those are meant to be able to move on that kind of track in there on the ball joint and it, they're just not very securely connected onto there. So as you're moving the kit around, you know, posing the kit, you're going to find that those are just popping off all the time. Not really a big deal, but it's just a little bit annoying. As far as the head articulation, the head will go up to there, which is quite nice. It's pretty good upper movement. And then down to there, which is like that. And then this part here on the top will be for the kind of semi transformation later, but that's just on like a little track. That part can move up to the front kind of like that. So you will see more about that here in a little bit. But that part is contained on the head here with these two like darker color gray plastic pieces there. And they tend to keep wanting to come apart a little bit. So I had to press them back together so that there's like they're closely connected there at the center. If I'm moving that this gold piece back and forth a couple times, that gap between those will start to grow again. So that's also a little bit kind of annoying. You have a little bit of forward and back bend here in the center of the torso. Actually, it's probably a little bit better backwards movement than forwards movement. But uh, yeah, there goes the shoulder again. A little bit uh, side to side here as well. It's kind of more so in like the hip section that's moving side to side, but it gives you a little bit of side bend there between the legs and the top of the body. So that's not too bad. The arms are pretty standard. They will move up to about there, which is pretty good with this very unique joint in there with like with it lacking any poly caps uh, it does work pretty nicely there and that whole section will also swing to the front pretty nicely as well so, so the shoulder articulation is actually really quite nice the arm rotation there at the top of the arm there and then you got a double joint at the elbow for a pretty good full bend there and then the wrist is just on a ball joint so the shoulder articulation especially uh, is really nice and the, just the rest of the articulation the arm seems very tight too so it should be able to hold some like very big size weapons without too much issue I would think down here to the front skirt armor those are connected at the center but you can kind of clip those to separate them for individual movement but those can move up to there oh you do have one more black sticker I almost forgot about there that black sticker there in the center of the crotch you also have that and these side skirt sections will also move up and down a little bit those can also be rotated kind of out to the back and you can sort of flip them out like this as well too it's kind of more for the transformation but those do move out of the way so you can get the legs out totally out to the side without any issue there and then a forward movement of the legs is also pretty good and bring it all the way up to about 90 degrees with the body and then a double joint there at the knee will give you a nice full bend there the thigh is one solid piece but for the lower leg you will have a seam line going all the way down the front of the white part and then all the way through this ankle armor as well too seam line right down the middle of those here on the back they're kind of hidden as a detail panel line there so that's pretty good you don't have to worry about that on the back but at least on the front you'll have a seam line going all the way down the front of the lower leg an ankle joint here is also pretty good you'll have side to side movement uh, forward and back pretty good you'll have this the back of the heel is like a fist i didn't notice that until i was building the kit and i was like okay there's a fist hidden up in there in his heel all right so that part's just kind of on a ball joint and moves around on its own but uh, the overall feet articulation is pretty good this uh 
section of ankle armor also moves slightly forward and back, but not really all that much. Just around here onto the back, this very curious style part here on the back of there, it also moves up and down quite nicely. And it's nice that that was an actual green piece up in there rather than stickers for this section. But let's talk about his uh, other accessories here. So first off, these are the connection pieces that you'll need to make sure you hang on to if you want to build the re-rise Gundam. These are the ones that you need for that. You have an action base adapter and then this clear part here too, which you'll use. That'll be for the king mode. So as I mentioned before, uh, that plugs into there and the transformation to king mode is just flipping this part here on the head up to the front like that. So it's sort of like resembling a crown, I guess, on the head. And now it has this uh, also effect part there on the front of the chest as well. So, I mean, kind of cool. And then we have the Raite Shot Lancer Kai here, which again, is not really anything new. This so it just has a basic handle on there. You can also hold on to it onto this section here. And pretty much what you see is what you get. Although you can separate this uh, for the king mode transformation of the weapons. You'll need to separate this and just not use this forward part. You'll need to use this part for, I guess, the handle of that. So we'll see that here in a second. That will also include the shield. So here's the shield. Again, it's just the same base piece of the shield that was used from uh, the previous version of the kit. And then here we have the handle, uh, sword handle, which is just stored here on the back. So that just plugs onto the back of there. And so it's just taking the circular part from the previous version of the kit and adding these white and gold parts onto the front of that to add some new parts there. And then we've got all the effect parts that will plug into there for the full weapon transformation there. For that hyper beam sword, you'll need a bunch of these guys, but we'll get to that in just a minute. I want to go through the transformations first because I'm pretty sure I'm not going to want to keep this in any of its transformed states, so we'll just transform it so that way I can transform it back to its mobile suit mode before we finish up the review. And all right, so first up here is going to be the high speed cruising mode, which uh, it's, it's kind of your very typical wing Gundam style kind of transformation where you turn the head around, uh, like you have the shield covering over the head and the arms are just laid flat and the legs are kind of bent up a little bit and that's kind of really about it. It's really not hiding the fact that it's a mobile suit in there within the transformation very much. Well, I mean, it's not necessarily the goal to hide the mobile suit, but it certainly doesn't look very cool in my opinion, but I don't know, you guys might think differently. It's just my subjective point of view on that one is that uh, I don't really think this transformation looks very cool, but there you go. That's what it looks like in its high speed cruising mode. And here it is in the assault combat mode. And I mean, yeah, there you go. Uh, I think this one, in my opinion, once again, it looks pretty dumb. But if this is what uh, you were hoping to do with this kit, it does pull it off. I mean, I'll, I'll say, no matter what you think of how it looks, it pulls it off. I mean, it does it without, you know, the kit falling to pieces or anything. I'm not really experiencing anything as far as like any loose parts or anything. Aside from those shoulder parts that I pointed out, the rest of the kit is very solid. So, I mean, if nothing else, I'll give it that. The articulation allows it to do these different transformations quite well. It's just that I don't think that they really look very good. And there's still one more transformation yet to do as much as I don't really care to. I will do it for you guys. So here is the last form. And that is the core fighter mode here, which is basically just the Gundam without its arms, legs, chest piece, and uh, parts of the backpack and big shoulder parts. So it's basically just like the head, the main core of the torso, the waist section, and then the weapons just stacked on top. That's, I mean, that's kind of about it. This is, again, the kind of thing that I feel like uh, so few people are going to want to do with this kit. Like if you're buying this kit, this is what you're gonna do with it, that you're just gonna like toss half the kit in the garbage and then just display the kit like this in the core fighter form. I really don't think so. So some people might wanna do it just, I mean, just to, for the transformation, just to kind of try it out. But to ultimately being, uh, to be like displaying the kit in this way, I gotta think you must be building like a build divers re-rise reenactment scene animation or uh, reenactment of the animation scene or something like that where you'd wanna display it like this. But just to finish the review then guys, we'll just spend a little bit of time here taking a look at some different poses that you can do with just the main mobile suit not transformed at all. And that's where I think this kit is definitely the best. It has a lot of gimmicks and I think that's one of the things that is going to be maybe appealing to some people about this kit. Some people like a kit that has a lot of gimmicks built into it and this is definitely one of those. So if that's what you're in for, then you'll definitely enjoy this kit. If you're the kind of person that just wants a cool design and don't really care too much about the gimmicks, then I think this one does have a pretty cool design. Like I said, the color scheme is a little wild, but the design is pretty cool if you just keep it in mobile suit mode and like just don't worry about all the gimmicky transformations and stuff that you can do with the weapons and everything like that. I think. 
as just a basic design, it's pretty interesting. It's certainly very unique, and I can definitely see some very creative paint jobs coming out of this and some cool customizations and stuff like that. So I think if that's what you're interested in, you know, there's something here for you too as well. So it's certainly not a bad kit by any means, but it's one that I think is understandably not necessarily going to appeal to everyone. But, you know, if you do think that it looks kind of interesting, then I would recommend you to check it out because uh, objectively, like I said, it's a solid kit. There's a couple of seam lines around the kit, but it's a high grade, so that's pretty standard. It would be pretty much more out of the ordinary if it didn't have any seam lines at all. So, I mean, that's understandable. But let me know what you guys think down in the comment section below. I'm interested to kind of get people's thoughts on this. Maybe how you guys think that it compares to the previous uh, version of the kit, the Justice Knight. But as always, guys, if you want to check out the kit for yourself or anything else, the link to USA Gundam Store will be down below. You can check it out there and you can use my coupon code there as well to save 10% off everything there on the site. And thank you guys, as always, for the support. I uh, really appreciate the liking the video, subscribing, commenting, all that. Greatly appreciated. So until next time, guys, hope you're all having a great day. See you later. Bye-bye.